Hey, welcome back everybody. And today it's Monday at noon. So we're going to do another Freight Broker Bootcamp Live, just like I do every single week. Thank you for joining me. If you're catching this on replay, I should say, make sure you hit me up in the chat box with a hashtag replay. I'd love to hear from my replay folks. Okay. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, let's make sure this is working. Okay, yes, we're good. Sorry, I'm back. Uh, anyway, listen, uh, thank you for joining me. Again, today we are going to talk about my very unsexy strategy for success, right? The totally unsexy secret to success. And I call it the 1% rule. That's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to tell you a little story, my background, kind of how this rule came to play, how I learned it, how I've applied it how others have applied it, and how you can apply it, okay? So that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we get into that, let's do a quick check-in. Let's see where everybody's coming in from. Hit me up in the chat box with the city and state that you're viewing from. Where are you logging in from, okay? I'm in the Buffalo, New York area, Western New York by Lake Erie, not New York City. I were on the opposite side of the state from New York City, thank God. Nothing against New York City, but I would never want to live there. Good place to visit, not a place. good place to live. So uh, check in, give me a heads up. Let me know where you're coming in from. I'll give you a shout out. I'll try to give you a shout out. I might be able, not be able to get everybody, but let's see. We've got Project Nerdvana from Queens, New York. Welcome. Shannon joined us. Nelson's joining us from Florida. Uh, Shane Quinn Wiley is joining us from uh, Lakeland, Florida. Boss Trey from Thomas Martin, Tennessee. Uh, we got uh, Nicholas Curie from Fort Worth, Texas. We have, oh geez, a big bunch skipped there. Sorry about that. We have uh, Captain Caveman from Fort Worth, Texas. Also, we've got more Texas in the house. Michelle Renee from Wyandotte, Michigan. Welcome, Jay Ward from Dallas, Texas. More Texas, of course. Heather from, uh, from Lost Creek, West Virginia. Welcome, Heather. Nicholas Curie from Texas. I know, exactly, right? Uh, Jarrell from Moreno Valley, California. We have Ammon Deep from Brampton, Ontario. And now we got another country in the house. We usually have US, Canada, and maybe one or two other countries represented. Greenville, South Carolina. Welcome. And there's a Facebook user. I don't know his name. Latino Wolf Trucker from Connecticut. Welcome. Marquetta Ross from Jackson, Tennessee. Holy cow. They're flying in here. Let's see. Uh, Kempel. Hmm. Kempel Seed from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Listen, if I murder your name or the city and state you're from, I apologize. Uh, it's sometimes hard to read. Uh, JT uh, Tao from El Paso, Texas. Connie Hall from Hilliard, Ohio. Kesla from South Carolina. Derek Rice from Little Rock. Bryson from Jacksonville, Florida. Welcome. Uh, Kenyatta from Charleston, Mississippi. Jason from Toronto. Uh, we have Robert from Charlotte. We've got we got Priscilla from Sacramento, Eric Vall from Santa Clarita, as always, is here. Man, we got people from all over the place. Thank you so much. I'm humbled because you've taken time to spend with me today. And my goal is to provide some value to you. So the context of today's uh, of today's you know training is the one percent rule, my unsexy secret to success. Okay. So I'm, I'm very honest and transparent about it. But before we do that, let me just set the agenda. First, we're going to do the training. We're going to talk about this topic, the 1% rule. Then I'm going to do a giveaway, right? I'm going to give away another one of my shirts, my freightpreneur shirts. Okay. I'm going to be giving one of you lucky viewers who's here live. You have to be live and you have to be from the United States. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is for shipping. Um, uh, is going to get this Freightpreneur shirt. I'll mail it out to you this week. So I'm going to pick one lucky winner. And then at the end, we're going to do live Q&A. So stick around to the end if you have questions. Many of you do. We usually have a whole bunch of questions uh, at the end. And I try to get through as many as I can time allotted. All right. So let's do the giveaway really quick. All right. So if you want to be entered to win, to get a chance to win this shirt, the Freightpreneur shirt, your size, of course, <laughs> Um, and it won't be pre-worn. It'll be brand new. Uh, all you need to do is this first, like the stream. If you're on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're watching this, like the stream, you got to hit the like button. That's number one. Number two, share the stream, click the share button, share it with your friends on Facebook, share it into a Facebook group that you belong to, uh, share it on your, with a few people via email, 
Share it on Twitter. Share it on Pinterest. I don't care where you share it, but share the stream, right? That's the price of admission for everybody who joins me live, but particularly if you want to have a chance to win one of the Freightpreneur t-shirts, right? So I've had a couple of different versions of this. This is my newest version, Freightpreneur. I like the design. I think it's pretty cool, uh, if I do say so myself. Uh, and I actually, believe it or not, I wear this and I get people that ask me questions all the time. They're always looking at it like, Freightpreneur, what is that? And they ask the question, so it's kind of cool. It's a nice conversation piece. But anyway, uh, Freightpreneur is kind of the brand that I created, and it's something that I think represents the people that are a part of my Freightbreaker Bootcamp community. So if you want a chance to win this shirt, share the stream right now. After the training, I'm going to look, and then you got to come back into the feed. I'm sorry, I didn't explain this. You got to come back into the comments, and you got to type hashtag shared, hashtag shared. That lets me know you shared the stream. Otherwise, I won't know. Okay. That's the only way I'm going to know. All right. So like this stream and then share the stream wherever you can share it in a Facebook group you belong to share it on Twitter, share it on Pinterest, share it on wherever, you know, on your personal feed on Facebook and then come back in and type hashtag shared to let me know you shared it. And then I'm going to randomly pick a winner at the end after the training. Okay. So you guys do that and uh, pay close attention. Okay, if uh, to to what I'm going to talk about today, because this is a very important lesson that I want you to really understand. All right, so let me grab a quick drink, and then we will proceed. All right, so let me move this mic out of my way a little bit. Okay, guys, so today we are here to talk about the one percent rule, which is my totally unsexy secret to success. First, let me start with a quick story. I was a starving college student. I had no money. I was a senior in college. I was going to be graduating uh, within a few months. And I was reading a college newspaper and I saw a job ad for a sales position. I had no experience in sales or business. I wasn't even a business major. I was a pre-law major but I needed money. So I applied for the job and lo and behold, they hired me. I was the absolute worst salesperson they had ever hired. Admittedly, self-proclaimed, the worst salesperson they had ever hired. But within six months, I went on to become the top salesperson, okay? The top salesperson in the entire company, right? And I quickly realized that the secret to that success was really the 1% rule, all right? And this is where the 1% rule came in. So my focus, right? See, most people think that success is about a specific event. You read a book and then you become successful. You watch a speaker, you know, someone who speaks on stage or at an event and you become successful. You take a course, an online course, and you become successful. That's typically not the case, right? What I have found is that what really works is small incremental changes cumulatively compounding over time is really the secret to success, right? So I recognize this phenomenon, you know, in my first sales job. I realized that rather than trying to go from being the worst salesperson to the best salesperson, you know, overnight, notice it took six months for me to become the sex best salesperson. I didn't say six minutes. I didn't say six hours. I didn't say six days. It took six months, a very diligent practice. And what I focused on was very simple. I focused on improving on every call, small incremental improvement on every call every day for six months. And the cumulative effect of that was that I developed my skills to such a level that I eventually became the top salesperson in the company. Now, if I had tried to go from the top salesperson or from the worst salesperson to the top salesperson in a day or an hour or a week, I probably would have failed because it took, it takes time. And that's the power of the 1% rule. If you focus on improving 1% per day, the cumulative effects of that will make you 
38 times better than in one year of 1% improvement per day, you will be 38 times better than you were when you first started. So imagine being 38 times better than you at something than you are today, whether that be sales, whether that be communicating, whether that be writing, whether that be speaking, whether that be negotiating, whatever the case may be, rating, whatever the case may be, okay? Imagine being 38 times better. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a cumulative, consistent focus on continuous improvement, all right? So that's the focal point. But I wanna share a story with you that's way more compelling than mine, right? Mine's interesting and I lived it, so it's something that's near and dear to me, but I'm gonna share a quick story with you, okay? There's a gentleman by the name of Sir Dave Brailsford. He became the head coach of the British cycling team in 2002. Now, in their 76-year history, prior to David coming on board, they had only ever won one Olympic gold medal. That was their, that was their pedigree. They basically were a nobody in international cycling. But from 2007 to 2017, uh, Sir Brailsford took the British cycling team from nobody to winning over 178 world championships, 66 Olympic and Paralympic gold medals, and also captured five Tour de France titles. All in that 10 year run. Okay. So it's widely recognized as the, you know, as the most successful run in cycling history. Now, Sir David Relsford was a former uh, cyclist, but what he did is he applied the theory of marginal gains to cycling. That's that 1% rule. His gamble was that if his team broke down everything there was to, that goes into cycling, and they improved each element by 1%, right? That they would achieve a significant aggregate increase in performance. So that was the gamble. So what they did is they experimented heavily in wind tunnels and they were looking for small incremental changes, small incremental improvements, you know, by analyzing the mechanics of the team truck, you know, they, they discovered that, you know, uh, there was dust accumulating on the floor undermining the bike's maintenance. So what they did is they painted the floors white to spot any sort of dust, to spot any sort of impurities. You know, they, he hired, another example is he hired a surgeon to actually teach the cyclists how to wash their hands properly, okay? So that they wouldn't get sick. So they were less likely to get sick. And at events like the Olympics, the team did not shake hands because they were afraid that they were gonna get sick, right? So they were trying to prevent illness, they were trying to improve performance 1% in all these different areas. Now there's lots of other things that they did, but ultimately, you know, the, you know, they searched for small incremental improvements and they found tons of opportunities. And what ended up happening was the cumulative effect of those 1% gains led them to again, 178 world championships and 66 Olympic and Paralympic gold medals and five Tour de France's. Now, that's pretty amazing, right? I told you my story about I was the worst sales guy, right? I was the worst sales guy that they had ever hired. I went on to focus on constant improvement, daily constant improvement, 1% per day. And I went on to become the top salesperson, which eventually led me to becoming an entrepreneur and now doing over $200 million in sales as an entrepreneur, as a freight broker and entrepreneur. That all stemmed from that initial sales job, right? From that focus on improving, the constant improvement, constant daily incremental improvement. And so my, my suggestion to you is, that's where you need to focus. It's not going to be a book. It's not going to be one of my videos. It's not going to just be the Freight Broker Bootcamp online training course, right? Or my upcoming Freight Broker Sales Accelerator training course. Those are all important components, but those are not going to be the one thing. You have to focus on improvement, daily constant improvement, 1% per day. So let me try to, I want to show you the math. I want to show you an image here really quick, if I can share my screen, because I want to show you the math on how this really works. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to need, I'm going to need some feedback from you guys in the audience. Can you see my screen? Can you see the image that says the power of tiny gains? Can you see that? Let me know in the chat box if you guys can see that. I want to make sure that you guys can actually see that. So give me a heads up in the chat box and let me know. Yes. Okay, great. All right. So this image is, you know, from uh, a book that I read called The Atomic Habits, Atomic Habits. Highly recommend the book. The author's name is James Clear. And this is an image from the book. And it says the power of tiny gains. So if you look at the math here, 1% better every day. So if you take a 1% gain, which is 1.01, right? A 1% gain over 365 days, over one year, what happens up happening is you are 37.78 times better than you were at the start. So do you see how the compounding effect takes place? When I told you earlier, you're going to be about 38 times better than you are a year from now, right? But here's the, here's the, here's the kicker. Here's the hard part. If you don't focus on improvement, you're never staying the same. So you're getting worse. Now here's the math. When you don't, when you, when you uh, get 1% worse every day. So if you have 1% worse every day, right? All of a sudden now at the end of the year, you lose 97% of your capabilities, right? You, you degrade by 97% because ultimately you only end up with, oh, and of course we have some sort of a pop-up here that's coming up. So let me see what I can do about getting rid of that. Sorry about that. Um, so ultimately if you, if you, lose, if you get worse 1% every day, you will eventually after a year will lose 97%. You will only have 3% of what you started with. So do you see how it has a negative impact? Look at the image. It compounds the positive 1% gain compounds over time to make you 38 times better. But the negative also will compound, but will ultimately degrade your, your skills and your ability and the level of success that you have. So that 1% rule, that constant and continuous search for small incremental improvements over time is the secret to my success. You know, I was not an overnight success. You know, I had many, many business failures early in my career, but I never gave up and I always focused on constant improvement. I got better with every venture. I got better with every business. I got better with every product or service. I got better in sales. I got better at the craft and that took time. And so my point to you is this, you know, I want you to understand that it's not going to just be one event that's going to lead you to success. Yes. It's great to be inspired by these videos. It's great to be inspired by uh, motivational speakers. That's great. I love it. That's all great fuel. But ultimately, the secret to success, my very totally unsexy secret to success is the 1% rule. And that's not just my me doing that, right? That's an example. Of, I gave you the example of Sir Dave Brailsford and the, with the British you know, cycling team. And there are countless, countless other people that have applied that rule to their life and their business and have had huge success. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you did, if you're curious about becoming a freight broker or freight agent, right? Check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. We have the most cost-effective, comprehensive online freight broker training program available on the market today, right? We offer a 60-day 100% money-back guarantee. We've had over 8,000 students. I think it's actually closer to 10,000. I got to do another count. Um, but we've had thousands of students. Many of them have went on to build six and seven figure businesses. So if you're curious about becoming a freight broker, freight agent, make sure you check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you did make sure you share the stream because next I'm going to be giving away the t-shirt. Okay. I'm going to give away the t-shirt and then we're going to do live Q and a. All right. So we're going to give away, we're going to give away the shirt. Then we're going to do live Q and a, let me grab a quick drink. Let me get rid of this, share the screen. I think my, uh, my video editor is probably going to be pissed. Sorry about that because I forgot to take that down. 
but ultimately it is what it is, right? So um, yeah, let me grab a quick drink and then we'll do the giveaway. If you want to be a part of the giveaway, if you want a chance to win this shirt, like the stream and share the stream. And then you got to come back in here and you got to type hashtag shared in the comments. Okay. If you don't do that, I don't know that you're, you want to be a part of the giveaway and I can't help you. Right. I can't pick you because what I do is I, I, I have all of your shares on my screen and I just scroll down through randomly pick one with my eyes closed and boom, you're the winner. That's as scientific as I can get on a live. And of course you can't win more than once. Right. So other people that have done this, uh, can't win the t-shirt again, but ultimately I do appreciate everybody being here live, right? Cause I know your time is valuable. So I, I sincerely appreciate, and I'm humbled by the fact that you even pay attention to what I have to say <laughs> because, um, you know, I, I don't really consider myself an expert, right? I consider myself a practitioner, someone who's actually done the craft, but I do like to share and, you know, the feedback that I get from students after they come back and, you know, they get their first shipper and they move their first load and they make their first six figures and they build their first seven figure business and they buy their house and they, and they're able to pay for their kid's college education and they, you know, they're able to buy a brand new car and they're able to save money for retirement. Those are the stories that keep me going, right? Those are the inspiration that I, that I come back with every week, week in and week out to try to help you guys. Okay. So, all right. So we're going to give it 60 more seconds to share the stream. You got to like, then share the stream. I'm going to do the giveaway and then we're going to stick around for live Q and a hold your questions because I, if you put them in there now, I'm not going to see them because everybody's hitting the share, right? They're doing hashtag share. So hold your questions until after I give away the shirt and then I'll be sure to see your questions so that I can try to answer it. Okay. All right. So we got a lot of people sharing. And again, this is a, um, you know, this is a uh, honesty policy, right? I, I'm not able to validate whether you actually shared while we're live here. So this is one of those things where you got to be honest and actually share the stream, right? All right, cool. So we got a lot of people sharing. All right, Michelle shared on Twitter. Thank you, Michelle. Others are sharing it on Facebook. Um, I've seen people share it to different Facebook groups. I've seen people do it to different, you know, uh, by email, whatever the case may be. Awesome. All right. So here we go, guys. We're going to give away the shirt. So I am going to open my window here so I can see more of your. All right. So here it goes, guys. I am going to let me get the section where everybody's at. All right. So we're going to scroll and the winner is. The winner is Michelle Renee. Michelle Renee. She shared on Facebook. Thank you, Michelle. You are the winner of the Freightpreneur shirt. Here's all you need to do to collect your prize, okay, and your winnings. Go to the Freight Broker Bootcamp Facebook page. Go to the Facebook page for Freight Broker Bootcamp. Send me a message with your full name, your mailing address, your phone number, and your size, okay? Now, I'm about 5'11", 195 pounds. This is a large, okay? These are unisex sizes. I don't have men's and women's. This is unisex sizing. So adjust your size accordingly. If you're a small, great. I'll send you a small. If you want a medium, again, leave room because t-shirts shrink, right? I want to make sure that this is something that you're able to enjoy. So Michelle Renee is the winner. Thank you so much for everybody playing along and for sharing the stream. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for being here live. Uh, for those of you that can stick around, you know, I'm probably, I'm going to be doing some Q&A here. I have a little bit of time left um, and we'll do some Q&A. So here's what I want you to do. Again, Michelle, all you need to do is go to the Freight Broker Bootcamp Facebook page, send me a message, your name, your address, your size, and I will get that out to you in the next week. That'll get mailed out. Again, it could take, by the time they process, it could take a couple weeks for you to get it. But the sooner I get your information, the better it is. Okay. All right. So let's do some Q and a guys. What do we got? All right. Congrats, Renee. All right. So I'm scrolling through for questions. Those of you that have questions, type them in the chat box.
Okay, so JT Tao has a question. Can you talk about EFS and com check work? Okay, so just so everybody understands what a com check is, right? So a com check is used typically for two reasons. One is if a driver needs a fuel advance. Now, a fuel advance is where, say for example, you as a broker cover a load with an owner operator and in order, because they're an owner operator, they have limited capital, right? They need a fuel advance to actually add, put fuel in their truck so that they can run your load because it's as a small business, cash flow is challenging. So, com data, right? Um, you know, there's different services for doing these fuel advances, but a com check is where you can actually issue a series, a code of, of basically numbers to a driver over the phone and they will be able to get an advance of a certain amount of money. You can limit the amount of money, hundreds or thousands of dollars, whatever you choose to do. So comp checks are typically used for fuel advances, right? Where an owner operator or a driver needs fuel cost in order to run your load. Otherwise he's going to run out of fuel and he can't run your load. Now, the second way people use com checks very heavily is for lumpers, right? Which is for a load or unload service. So as a broker, sometimes your clients will have uh, shippers and receivers that charge what's called a lumper service, which is a, a fee for loading or unloading the truck. Now, if the driver is not going to unload it, which many times they don't want to load or unload, and sometimes they're not even allowed to load or unload the truck, um, you're going to have, they're going to have to pay a lumper service. Now, sometimes the carriers don't have the money to pay the lumper service. So you're going to have to give them a com check, right? You're going to have to give them a com check for a lumper of which then they're going to be able to pay the lumping service. Now, as a broker, you'll get reimbursed by the shipper for this money for lumper services. Maybe it costs a hundred dollars to get the truck unloaded but you will get reimbursed. So it's not coming out of your profit, okay? If you're smart and you've discussed it up front, most brokers or most shippers don't expect you to cover the cost of a lumper. Um, now there are some exceptions to that, but in most freight, you do not consume the cost of the lumper. That's something that the shipper will reimburse you, right? And so ultimately, those are the two primary ways that people use uh, com checks, either a fuel advance, uh, a lumper. And the third one would be a quick pay, right? So say, for example, you wanted to do a quick pay, um, pay a carrier quickly, they deliver the load and they want to be paid same day or next day. Um, you know, you can use a com check for a lumper service. Now you have to set up a service to, to be able to do these types of instant transfers. Um, com data, I, I think it's still com data. They may have sold but Com Data was the company that did all the Com Checks. If not, just search Com Check, C O M C H E K. Okay, search for Com Check, and you can see uh, it's probably e it might be also be EFS, depending on you know um, uh, who's who's running that service now. But ultimately, it's a money transfer service. It's kind of like a Venmo in a way, right? It's kind of like a Venmo in a way where you can send people money through your cell phone through this app. Similar to that, but but um, using a sequence of numbers, right? Not accounts and whatnot. So I hope that helps. Talk a little bit about com checks. All right, let me scroll up here. Boom. All right, so I'm scrolling through. Okay, so this is a question I get all the time. Uh, I own a trucking company and I started to look into starting a brokerage as an additional income stream. Would I need to entirely new LLC, new DOT and new MC numbers? Okay. So it's not required that you have a new um, LLC um, or to, to file for your broker authority, but many people in the industry that have asset based and in, 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 in brokerage based that go through my training, tell me the feedback is that sometimes the insurance companies will give you a hard time or raise your rates on your asset base side if you have a brokerage inside of the, the same corporation that your, that your asset base side is in. So a lot of times 
carriers will break the, the brokerage side out into a separate LLC. Now it might be XYZ trucking, and then you might have an LL, uh, the broker side that's XYZ logistics, right? Which is, you know, the same company, but just a different division, right? So that's the feedback that I get. Now you gotta understand, I was never an asset-based broker. So I don't have that, that background myself. Some other people might be able to chime in in the comments, but I have heard that the insurance, so the first thing you wanna do as a carrier before you go out and get, file for your brokerage authority is talk to your insurance company about how would opening a brokerage affect your insurance? Would it affect it? What are the pros and cons? What are the best practices for preventing any sort of an issue? Talk to your insurance company. They'll consult with you. They'll coach you. They know the insides and outs on how that's going to work. And if it's going to significantly impact your insurance cost or, or threaten any sort of issue with your asset base side, easily, you can easily set up another LLC and set up your brokerage under that. Okay which of course would require a new MC and a new DOT and all that. Okay. Because if you have a separate corporation, you're not going to be able to have the same MC and same DOT because it's a different entity. Okay. So I hope that helps. Good question though. Okay. I answered that. All right, I'm scrolling. Uh, how hard is it to get the freight broker license legitimately? Uh, e, uh, is it ESIS? ESIS Leonard? ESIS, it's not hard at all. It's not hard at all. It's an online application and three or four qualifications. You need to get your freight broker surety bond, right? Which is, uh, which is basically almost like an insurance, kind of like an insurance product. It's a surety bond. You need to have a BOC3, which is just a form that's filled out as a processing a agent. Uh, you need your UCR, which is Unified Carrier Registration, which is an online registration. Um, and geez, that's really pretty much it, right? You need the application, you need the bond, you need the BOC3, you need your UCR. It's all done online. It's not hard, right? It's not complicated. So, but there are companies out there that will do the service for you. They charge, you know, sometimes $300, $500, $1,000 just to do the filing. Personally, I don't think it's worth the money because in Freight Burger Bootcamp, as a, as a small part of what we do, we teach you how to do that filing. We teach you how to set up your authority. We teach you to go through that process. Now, that's a very small part of the program. The program goes way beyond that, including launching your business and operations and marketing and sales and and rating and load boards and, you know, all the sorts of stuff that you need to know in order to be a broker or an agent. But a small part of that is that, but we teach people how to do it. We don't do it for you, but it's not complicated. It's not hard. We've had, I don't know how many people from my course have actually gotten their authority, actual numbers, but my estimate would be thousands, right? Thousands have went on to go out and do it on their own. And I, and all we've ever done is maybe answered a few questions online because we do support them afterwards. Anybody who's a part of the freight broker bootcamp. Um, so I hope that helps. It's, it's, it's really not that hard. Yeah. Bombay Montre agrees with me. It's not hard at all. Okay. It's not that complicated. Brian Johnson asks, for beginners, what's a good way to get your feet wet? I was going to go to a freight broker school. Then what should I do after that? All right. So first get trained, whether you decide to do an online training, which is typically a lot more affordable, or you decide to go to a classroom course, which are obviously a lot, a lot more expensive, a thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars versus a few hundred. Okay. Get trained. And then from there, if capital, if you have limited capital or limited experience, start as a freight agent. Okay. A freight agent is an independent contractor that works under a licensed freight broker. So let's say I'm a licensed freight broker. I have my authority. I have my bond. I'm active. I can legally broker freight. Um, I can hire independent contractors who work under me and they typically will go get their own customers. They'll find their own carriers. They'll dispatch all their own loans. They'll operate under my authority and we operate as a revenue share. Most agents get paid somewhere between 50 and 70% of the profit. 
from the load. And then the broker who's assuming liability and provides technology and financial management and all that sort of stuff also gets his rev share on that. So my suggestion is get trained. And if you still have concerns or you know, limited capital or limited experience, start as a freight agent. Because the fact is, if you can't make money as a freight agent, you're not going to make money as a freight broker. Because becoming a freight broker is just a little bit more complex, right? You've got some more complexity. When you, once you get your operations up and running, you got to do billing, you got to do collections, you got to do, you know, invoicing, you got to have, you know, you got to have, you know, vet your own technology, you got to have all the load boards set up, you got to do all that. But as an agent, all that's set up for you, that all that's done for you. And all you really need to focus on is getting customers and then finding drivers to move the loads. And you get paid a percentage, 50 to 70% of the profit on every one of those loads. And as soon as the load's delivered, your job is pretty much done. And that's when the broker has to do all the administrative and financial stuff, right? So I think getting trained and then starting as an agent is probably the least common denominator, the easiest way to get your feet wet. Plus, you can do it part-time if you choose, as long as, you know, it's not, it's not a side hustle, but you can start part-time. All right, hope that helps. So Ricky Brown asks, how can you establish credit without using a factoring company? Okay, well, in transportation as a freight broker, as a brand new freight broker with a new LLC and a new authority and having not ever moved a load before, you are not going to have any what we call transportation credit. Your credit on the load boards is going to be non-existent. So when a load board when a carrier sees you post a load and you have no credit rating or you have a very low credit rating because you're brand new, um, you know, some carriers are going to shy away from that, right? Some carriers will, some carriers won't. But ultimately, the way you build your credit is very simple. It's just like you built your personal credit. You have to get credit. So you have to get a carrier to extend you credit on a load, which isn't that difficult. Let's say it's a $500 or $1,000 load. Now, First time load, a carrier, that when you have no credit, they're probably not going to extend credit to you on a $10,000 load or maybe even a $5,000 load. But a $500 or $1,000 or $1,500 load, typically not a big deal. Once they extend credit to you and then they invoice you and you pay them on time or you pay them even before the money's due, then you contact them and ask them to report you on the, you know, on the load boards, on the credit reporting agencies, TransCredit, different credit... And Sonia, um, you know, Equifax, uh, Dun & Bradstreet, you ask them to report you as a good payer. And so what happens is every time the load boards and every time your credit profile sees that you have a new vendor that you paid on time or a repeat vendor that you paid on time, your credit will be built. But like anything else, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes a little bit of time. Um, you know, I, I remember early on, you know, our first month we moved, I think, 12 loads in our first 30 days. But during those 12 loads, we had carriers, some carriers that wouldn't run with us. But yet we moved 12 loads. We had at least 12 carriers that would run with us. And so the point is, is that, you know, in order to build your credit as a business, it takes time, just like on a personal level. But here's the good news. Your credit can go up very quickly if you are moving loads. So let's say, for example, you have F, you have zero credit because you're brand new. If you move five loads or 10 loads and you get all of those carriers to report on you as you're paying on time or even early, right? If, you, if their invoice time is 30 days and you pay them in 21 days or 14 days or seven days or even one day, if you pay them early and they report that, your credit is going to go from zero to a C or a B very quickly. And then eventually over time, you'll have A credit. Okay, so that's the basic process. There is no magic, you know, there is no magic pill. There is no button that you can push to make yourself have good credit. It's business credit. It's just like any other business. You have to build it one block at a time, one load at a time, one carrier at a time, one invoice at a time, one good, you know, credit experience at a time with your vendors. That's the answer, right? I know it may not be sexy. It's probably not what you want, but those are the reality. That's the reality. (laughs) 
All right. So here's a question from Corey Miller. Is a small brokerage less likely to hire me on with no experience, but did Freight Broker Bootcamp knowing my end goal is my own brokerage? Okay. So I think what you're getting at, Corey, is you want to be an agent. And if you go out to a small brokerage, which is what I teach on how to get hired as a freight agent, go to a small brokerage who's maybe doing a million or two million or five million in sales and then offer them the value proposition. Will they hire you if they know that your ultimate goal is to become your, get your own freight brokerage? I don't know. Some will, some won't, but you don't know until you try, right? Now, my suggestion is don't lie, be transparent and be honest with them. Say, listen, I'm starting as an agent, but I, and I may choose later to become a freight broker down the road. I, you know, I may choose to do that, to get my own authority. I want to be upfront and transparent with you. I don't want to hide anything with you. Now that might be a year. That might be five years. So we can have, and it may never happen depending upon the circumstances of what's going on. So my suggestion to you is to be transparent, be honest, be upfront in your dealings with anybody you do business with, but particularly someone you're going to have a partnership with. You don't want to go into that lying or misleading them. Now, the fact is, even though you, you right now in your mind, you think you want to own a brokerage and that's fine. That's a great goal. But I can tell you that there were many agents that have worked for me in the past that had the same goal. But guess what? Once they became a successful agent and they realized all of the work that goes to, on the broker side, all of a sudden they said, listen, I'd rather get 70% and not have to do all 60 or 70% and not have to do all that work and just focus on my customers and be able to take vacations and be able to have time off and be able to have flexibility and still make a crazy income than to have to do all of that and take all of the risk. And many of them stayed agents and are still agents today, right? Perfect example. Uh, I interviewed Monica Gonzalez, a good friend of mine. We've known each other for over 10 years. She used to be an agent for my brokerage. She's also a student of Freight Broker Bootcamp. Um, and she, you know, last year we had a lot of conversations because she was considering or really wanted to start her own brokerage. She had been an agent for many years. You guys have heard her story. In 2019, she made over $300,000 as an agent, right? She did very well in 2020, even though it was a down year. You know, she's recovered. 2021 is going to be a great year for her, like many. But ultimately, she wanted to become her own brokerage. She wanted to have her own brokerage, her own authority. Well, after sitting down and really talking to her about what her ultimate goals were, she chose not to get her freight broker authority. She chose to stay an agent because she can make an incredible income without the risk and without all the extra work, right? And so while you think that that may be what you want to do today, you know, six months or a year, 18 months from now, you might not, and you may stay with them. So I would be upfront, but I wouldn't specifically say, listen, my plan is, is, you know, uh, you know, I want to be an agent for you in three months from now, I'm going to quit and start my own brokerage. Or when I get my first customer, I'm going to quit and start my own brokerage. Cause number one, I wouldn't advise that because it's not smart. And number two, um, I, I just don't think that's a reality. I think it's going to take a year, 18, 24, 36 months, depending upon the individual, uh, of building your business, really understanding the pros and cons, really getting your feet wet. Um, that constant improvement every day over the next 12, 18, 24 months is what's going to put you in a position where you can ultimately make that decision as to whether you want to go out and get your freight broker authority or whether you just want to stay a freight agent and make a lot of money. Okay. Depends on your ultimate goals, but I hope that answers your question. All right. So I'm scrolling. Hold on, I gotta look something up really quick. Okay, so uh, CJ Perrin asks, what does SCAC stand for? It stands for Standard Carrier Alpha Code, right? Which is uh, a code that identifies common carriers, right? It's Standard Carrier Alpha Code. So, you know, 
it's a, it's a code that you actually set up for. You have to apply for a SCAC code because some shippers require you to have a SCAC code in order to be approved. Now, there might be a small expense of getting your SCAC code. It's a very small percentage that require a SCAC code, but uh, it's S-C-A-C -C is the code, right? So it stands for Standard Carrier Alpha Code, right? So um, we had a SCAC code. It's something you apply for online. It's super simple. I think it's inexpensive, uh, you know, um, and you can ultimately get it set up very quickly. So I hope that answers your question. Isis. Okay. Thank you, Isis. I hope you come back to a future one and maybe I'll be able to pronounce it properly in your next question. <clears throat> so here's a question. Captain Caveman asks, are paid seminars worth the cost for a new brokers? Well, it depends upon your budget, but you, you just... I'm a big believer in education. I'm a big believer in constant ongoing improvement. So I think education is a part of that process. So I think I'd be a hypocrite being a guy who's in the online education business now after since selling my brokerage um, if I didn't say that taking seminars or trainings is a good investment. Now, I can't represent the seminar you're talking about. I don't know who they are. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know their pedigree. I don't know their background. I don't know any of that. I don't know the cost. But here's what I can tell you. You are never going to hurt yourself as a new broker experiencing, you know, education that's specific to what your goals are. So, for example, I'm launching the new Freight Broker Sales Accelerator program that I launched a few months ago in, in kind of a beta founders members group, sold out in one day. I'm relaunching that uh, hopefully very soon in the next few weeks, hopefully. And that is an online education program for people that want to learn how to sell freight brokerage. So I take that piece of my brain and I, and I share it with you and I transplant it into your brain through this course that we're working very diligently on. Um, and so ultimately, yeah, I think online education is important, but I think it's got to be specific to what your skills that you need to develop. This is a, the number one skill that determines whether you are successful as a freight broker or freight agent after you get set up and get your business up and running is sales. There's no way around it. But here's the good part. You don't need to have experience in sales. You don't need to be some super charisma, charismatic, um, outspoken person. You don't need to be an extrovert. Matter of fact, I'm an introvert. Yeah, I know it might be hard for you to believe, but I'm an introvert, right? So uh, ultimately, you know, if the skills and the training that you're taking are specific to uh, your goals, great. If you can afford them financially, great. But the biggest ROI I've ever gotten on any investment in my life is the $100,000 plus that I've invested into my own personal development and training, right? So I've invested well over $100,000 in coaching and mentoring and training and courses and, and all the things that I've had to do to see constant improvement over my 25 year career as an entrepreneur. Now, I'm not saying you're going to have to invest $100,000, but you may invest more ultimately over time, right? So, but it all starts somewhere. So I hope that helps. Thank you, CJ, for the kind words. Thank you so much. So uh, JT Tao asks, how do we pay, how do you pay carriers as a broker? It typically goes one of two ways. You send them a physical check, you write them a check, you send them a check, or you do an ACH, right? A bank to bank transfer. Those are the two. And then the third one would be some sort of a comm check if you're going to do a quick pay. Those are the three primary ways, right? In most cases, it's going to be a check or an ACH. There are other systems for doing it. Um, there are other ways of doing it, but the most common are those three. Okay. If you're using a factoring company, there are different ways that factoring companies will do it. But if you're paying the carriers yourself, then it's either going to be a check an ACH or a comm check.
Uh, Michelle. Michelle asks, she's the winner of the Freightpreneur 2 shirt. So congratulations once again, Michelle. If I'm going to relocate to another state in March of 2022, should I wait to launch my business or should I wait until I get settled in South Carolina? I don't want to lose my customers or credibility. There's no reason why you'll lose your customers or credibility just because you're moving. Businesses move every day. Okay. So it should not be an issue. The key is don't make excuses for not starting. Okay. A little tough love there. Don't try to make excuses for not getting started um, because some people do that. And get started as soon as you're ready, as soon as you're capable of getting started. Because the, the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step and you've got to take that first step. For you to put off starting your business until you move doesn't make any sense. Because the reality is many of your customers, most of my customers, most of the shippers that we did business with as a brokerage, okay, I would tell you that 98% of the shippers that we did, did business with over the career of my business over $200 million in sales were not local to me. They were everywhere else. I was in Western New York. There was a small percentage that were local. The rest of them were always somewhere else. They were in Texas or California or the Pacific Northwest or Florida or New England or Canada or Mexico, wherever they were, but they weren't in my backyard. So my geography really didn't matter. When we decided to move, we just send them an updated address where they could send their, uh, send their payments, uh, where we were going to be paying the carriers from everybody knew where we were going to, where our new address was. And we just kept, and you just keep going. That's how a business relocates. It's really simple. So no, the answer is no, I wouldn't wait. Okay. A couple more questions and we're going to wrap it up. Uh, question, can you work as an agent until you can secure a reasonable surety bond? Sure. Yeah. If you want to work as an agent and start making cash flow, start getting customers and start building your business until you can repair your credit or build your credit to a point where you can get a cost effective bond. Most bonds cost somewhere between, let's call it a thousand and four thousand bucks roughly. If you have really good credit, really, really good credit, 800 plus, it might be closer to a thousand. If you have maybe average credit or maybe a little worse, maybe for uh, closer to 4,000. If you have really bad credit, you know, I've seen them as much as nine or $10,000, right? Um, but if you want to work as an agent to start getting your shippers, start building your credit, um, start building your business and growing your business. And then eventually when you're ready and when you have good credit, you get your own surety bond and you break out on your own. You absolutely can do that. There's no question. Many people go on start as agents and then go on as to be, get their own brokerage and many others just decide to stay as agents because they don't want, you know, the extra work and risk associated with being the broker itself. So hope that answers your question. Uh, T Watkins asks, should we leave voicemails for shippers or call back later in the day? The answer is yes. Yes, you should leave voicemails, but you should leave very short voicemails. I'm talking 10, 15 seconds. And second of all, you should not leave a voicemail on every call, but you should leave voicemails periodically. It's a part of what I call my sales cadence, right? I have in my freight broker sales accelerator program, I have a winning voicemail blueprint, which is an entire strategy on how to script out your voicemail to literally double the response rates that people call you back. Okay. And that you get in a dialogue. So, so yeah, so that winning voicemail blueprint is a part of the freight broker sales accelerator, uh, as well as tons of other things, you know, where I take that piece in my brain about sales and freight brokerage sales and freight agency sales. And I trans, you know, I translate it, transform it, and I transplant it in your head as a part of that online course. If you guys want to get on the wait list now that core, this course is going to sell out very quick, just like it did last time. Okay. It sold out in one day. Now, I don't know that it's going to sell out in one day this time, but I'm just giving you an example of what happened before, but it will sell out quick. If you want to get on the wait list for that Freight Broker Sales Accelerator, so you're the first to get notified, okay, you need to go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash FB sales, FB sales, all right? So freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash FB sales. You'll be able to get on that wait list. It's a text notification where when this goes live, you'll get notified. You'll be able to go check it out. You'll get all the details on what it includes, the cost. It's not free, just so you know. It's a, it's an investment. There's an investment there. 
but you know, the investment that you make, the value will be at least 10 times, minimum 10 times more than what you, uh, than what you uh, invest in the program. It'd be worth 10 times what you guys put in or invest in it, but it won't be free. Okay. So if you guys want to get on the wait list for the freight broker sales accelerator, again, that's a perfect example where you can learn the winning voicemail blueprint. You can learn how to do those sales cadences where you're, uh, where you have a sales cadence that includes, you know, phone calls without a voicemail, phone calls with a voicemail, emails, using LinkedIn, cold outreach, warm outreach, you know, um, face-to-face, all of the different tools and channels that you can use. I integrate that into my multi-touch point um, sales strategy, which is a part of the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator. Um, again, we had 58 students go through that course and I had a 97, 9.7 out of 10 uh, rating on that course after 58 students went through it because I surveyed them. And so it was a, it was an amazing experience. I, I should have created this course 10 years ago. I hope you guys are excited about it. It's going to launch soon. Again, get on the wait list for the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator at freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash FB sales. Okay, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for today. I know I didn't get to everybody's question. Come back next week. i be one of the first to put the question in the feed, and I promise I will do my best to get to your question. But if you're sitting here curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, and you want to learn more, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. We offer a 60-day, 100% money-back guarantee. We're the only program that I know of that does that. We offer that you don't have to have any reason or excuse. You just tell us you want a refund, and we'll refund your money. Okay. So we put our money where our mouth is. The reason being is because our refund rate is so freaking low that, that we don't even have to worry about it. Very few people request a refund, right? And so our customer satisfaction rate is really high. So let us help you walk through this process of getting your brokerage or your agency launched. Let us help coach you through the early trials and tribulations of any business. And uh, you can get all that at FreightBrokerBootCamp.com. Again, trained over 8,000 students. We offer a 60-day, 100% money-back guarantee. I hope you guys enjoyed this training. If you did, make sure you like, comment, and share. And make sure, most of all, you join me next week for another Freight Broker Bootcamp Live. Have an awesome week, a profitable week, and we'll talk to you next week.